Welcome back to Aliens. My name is Devin Reddy and let's continue with the series on Python. In the last video, we have seen how to install MySQL and with that, we also got Workbench and then we were able to create a database, we were able to create table and then we were inserted some data and then at the end, we have also seen how to fetch them with the help, of course, with the help of select statement. The ultimate goal was to connect Python with database, right? But we have only done with MySQL pilots of now. Now, even before connecting MySQL with Python, you need one thing in between, which is MySQL connector. The thing is, if you want to connect MySQL with any language, you need a connector in between. It doesn't matter which language you're talking about. We need a connector. Now, how do you install them? How do you install that connector? So what you will do is you will install that connector with Python. And the way you do that is by opening a CMD. And then we have to use package installer. Of course, we have done that before, which is PIP. So if you remember PIP, so type PIP3 and we have to give a command which is install. And now we have to mention the name of it, which is MySQL connector. And then you just have to simply say enter. If PIP3 is not working on your machine, uh, so you will find a video in the description area, which will help you to make your PIP3 work. So I hope it will be done soon. So as you can see, our MySQL connector is done. Now it's time to actually work with Python. Now we can use Sublime Editor here. So we can use any editor we want. So in the earlier series, we have talked about PyCharm, but then we can also use Sublime. In fact, some people have this debate in the comment section that PyCharm is heavy. We want a lightweight IDE. Uh, so we can use Sublime as well. Sublime is not exactly an IDE, but then it, it's an amazing editor and you can run your Python code here itself. So you can simply type a Python code as we can see, we can type hello and then if you want to run it, of course we need to save this. So I will say, so to save this file and now if you run this code, it's very easy actually. Uh, you just need to go to tools and here you have to say build system, I will say Python. So select Python here and simply say control B. The moment you say control B, it will ask for the language. Of course, it's Python we know. Simply click on enter and you can see it says hello. So yes, you can run the code here itself. So that works. Now, once we have Sublime ready with us, now let's start with the actual connection. So how do you connect this? So step one, you have to import the connector which we have done already before. So simply say import and mention mysql.connector. So first step done. So once we have imported it, now let's go for the actual connection. So steps are very simple. You will simply say mydb, you can have any variable, it doesn't matter. So the method name is actually connect. So we have to use a method which is connect. So this connect method will give you the database connection. But of course we have to pass some parameters. You have to pass username, you have to pass the password and you have to also mention database name, which is optional at this point. We can specify this too. And then we also need to mention the IP address. As we know, MySQL can be installed on some other server so of course you have to mention the IP of it as well so let's mention them so I will say host and the host is localhost in this case the next parameter we have to mention is username so we can use root or we can use Naveen let me use Naveen here the next thing we have to mention is password but then for password we have to use pass wd and you have to say one two three four and then we have to okay the next is optional so let's mention host username and password now this will work the thing is this connect method belongs to mysql.connector. So we have to mention that as well. So we have to say mysql.connector.connect. Now this should work. Now let's verify if, this, if we are getting some error. Let me just give a wrong password initially. So I will say five and we know it's a wrong password. Say control B and you can see we got something. We got a big text here. Let's see what that text is. And this text says, okay, where is the error? Can you see that it says access denied for user Naveen at localhost? So why access denied? Maybe the wrong password. Let me just go back to the right password. So I will run this code once again. And you can see we got, so we got something, but not the actual output, right? It says finished. That means the code is working. Now, if you are wondering how to run this, it's control B. Okay, so control B is the shortcut to run this. Okay, now once you have done the connection, now let's go with next step. So let's write a code to fetch all the database name in our machine. How do we do that? So basically we can use my db dot. So there's a method called as cursor. So you will say C-U-R-S-O-R. -S so this method cursor will actually give you the cursor to work with your code. So you can imagine cursors as pointers, you know, they will point to the particular location. So when you say cursor, now using this cursor, you have a connection with database and you can execute statement if you want, you can fetch data, you can insert data. So let's do that. Initially we are fetching database name, right? All the databases. So let's do that. So I will say my cursor, and if you want to execute any statement, any SQL statement, you will simply use execute method. And in this, you can just simply write your SQL query. So if you want to see all databases we have, which is show databases, 
And that's it. But the problem is if you say show databases, it will fetch all database name and it will store in the cursor itself. So example, if I run this code, you can see nothing is happening because the data is stored inside cursor. So you can imagine cursor has a box as well. It's an object basically. So this object has some methods and some variables. So in those variables, we got your data. But I want to fetch them, right? So you can use a loop here. So you can say for i in my cursor. So my cursor will give you the list. You can print it. And let me print i here. I hope this will work. Let me just run this code. And you can see it is printing a lot of data for you. So as you can see, we got all the database name. So as you can see, we already have the disco here. That's great. Once you know how to show databases, now let's go for the next step. So the next step is we want to fetch the actual data. If you remember, we have created a table called student in that we had two records, Naveen and Priya, we want to fetch them. So if you want to fetch them, you need to fire a query, which is select star, right? We have to say select star from the table name. We can do that here. So instead of saying show databases, I have to mention select star from student. So this student table belongs to Telesco database, right? And nowhere in the code we have mentioned that. So when you want to fire the actual queries, you have to pass one more parameter, which is database name. So I will say database is equal to and we have to mention database name which is Telesco. So yes, if you want to specify table name, uh, specify database name as well. Now once you do that, you can simply use the same command to execute because select star from student will give you that record, right? Naveen, VSIT and then Priya, BBIT. Now let's run this code and you can see that we got data. We got Naveen, we got Priya. That's great. Uh, it's so simple, right? You can execute whatever statement you want. In fact, instead of using cursor, we can also use, we can also save the data somewhere. So let's say, let me just say result equal to, we can fetch data from cursor. So you will say cursor dot there's a method called as fetch all. So instead of directly using cursor, we can use the result as well. It will work the same way, but then you're storing your data somewhere. So what we're doing, we are fetching data from cursor, we are putting that in a result, and from result, we are fetching the data. This is working, that's great. But then we have one more issue. What if you want to fetch only one, the first record? So you can also use fetch one. Let's run this and you can see it will fetch only one. Now why it is showing new line? Because we are using for loop, right? You can simply print the result, it will print that in one line. So this works. So you can use fetch all, you can use fetch one. In fact, we can also use insert statement. We can also use delete, alter, everything. So try it by yourself. Let me know in the comment section if you have any issues with those things. Uh, so that's it from this video, everyone. Bye-bye.